Well, on behalf of Cyrus and Rebecca, I would like to welcome all of you to this special day, one of the most important days of their life. We are gathered here to witness, to celebrate, and to acknowledge the love which Cyrus and Rebecca have together. Just before we continue, just a couple, a couple announcements after the ceremony. We would like to take a couple of group photos, uh, so stick around for that, and then we'll take some family photos, and then you can make your way to Grunkle, which is 48th Greenwood Bay, and we will have a reception there, uh, and we'll be celebrating more there as well. If you have any questions how to get there, talk to me or my lovely wife, or well, if you can detach Cyrus from Rebecca at that time, you can ask her to attend as well. Let's just open up the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, so much has come before this moment. The gift of commitment to each other, the treasures of life, of love, and of family, and the picture of hope which began to grow in the lives of Cyrus and Rebecca. For all that has been made them the people they are today, we thank you, Lord. So much has been invested here, and so much lies ahead. So we pray now that the love these two share will grow richer, fuller, and with each passing year. We ask, or sorry, we place them in your hands, knowing you will watch and care for them. We ask you to show them your grace, your joy, and your peace. Grant Cyrus and Rebecca a contentment and a satisfaction that they never thought possible. And all of us who love and support them, may it be our constant joy to watch their love grow and flourish now and forevermore. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We all do worry. 
I don't think there's anyone in this room who can not, do not say that they do not worry. In a perfect world, we would not worry. And so with that said, you chose a perfect passage this morning that you wanted me to touch on. And that is in Matthew 6, 25 and 34. And I want to read it so you can hear and enjoy what it tells you. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life more than, more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar, sow, nor reap, nor gather uh, in, in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his or her span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and my our Heavenly Father uh, knows that you need them all. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for in itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This passage is part of the Sermon on the Mount. It's showing us that humans we can that we cannot possibly attain perfection. The Sermon on the Mount was written to show humans that they cannot reach, they do not have the merit to reach the perfection. And we all, many of us, struggle with anxiousness at times, especially in times such as we are now. Cyrus and Rebecca, throughout your marriage, you will have many moments of uncertainty, and you will be anxious. It is in those times that you need to rest in God's promises. He will, he will never leave you or forsake you. Now, I have a little insight here. I don't know if you know this, Cyrus, but Cyrus was texting me a lot and communicate with me a lot. He was in Bible school and he came up to, to visit you there in BC. And you shared with me your prayers with each other. I believe it was the first time. No, it was your first time that you were praying together. It's a death thing. It's going to you know, hold on forever. And I remember I wrote it down in my phone because I, one day I wanted to share it. And it says, uh, Cyrus, uh, your prayer, Rebecca, was that you would, that you and Kenya would always guard your hearts. And Cyrus, your prayer was that you would make God the center of your relationship. And if you don't believe that, I said it. I have no more to show you. These are very two very valuable attributes to have. In your marriage, as it was in your relationship, when you have anxiousness come into your lives, these two attributes will help you to stay focused on God and not the issues that present themselves around you. Paul tells us how we can guard our hearts and keep Him the center of our lives. In Philippians four, verse five and seven, it says, "The Lord is at hand." Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God tells us that we need to, need to 
bring our worries and burden before him. We need to come before him in prayer and supplication. Do you know what the word supplication means or it says what it means? It is the action of asking or begging something earnestly or humbly. And that is what you need to do when you have anxious times. When anxious times come about, and they will, maybe tight finances, medical issues, job loss, change of job, etc. Paul tells us to continually ask earnestly for God's will. When you do this, God hears and will take your focus, you will take your focus off of the anxious times and place your focus upon Him. Cyrus, you will know this. One of our cornerstone verses as a family has always been in Jeremiah 29 11. And I love the way the, uh, the ESV says this. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil. To give you a hope of a future and a hope. Not a hope of a future, but a future and a hope. But it's your welfare, not your prosperity, nothing else. It's your well-being. God will take care of that. And so I want to encourage you to, to trust the Lord. Walk in His way. Be anxious for nothing. And when you do become anxious, give it to the Lord. Come together. Give it to Him. Cyrus and Rebecca, as you have placed Christ into the center of your relationship and now your marriage, you can count on him to walk with you and walk you through these storms of life. Cyrus and Rebecca, as you pledge your vows to each other, let me remind you that marriage made in heaven is a union of a man and a woman. Two lives, two hearts that beat as one, so welded together that they walk and work in love. A husband and wife should bear each other's burdens as well as share each other's joys. Remember that you will have to cultivate the art of living together. You will have moments of ripping each other's hair, but it's because you need to learn to live together. Be considerate, lovingly helpful, and tender-hearted, always putting the other one's needs first and holding uh, another up, each one another up in love. The vows you're about to share with each other should be as binding as in adversity as they are in prosperity. They should be broken only by death. At this time, you will repeat your vows to each other. I, Cyrus James, take you, Rebecca Hope, to be my lawfully wedded wife, to have and hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. I will love you as long as there is breath in my lungs. Enlighten my eyes. Strength in my bones and fire in my heart. As Christ loves and leads the church, so I shall love and lead you, whatever the cost may be. In all that I have and all that I am, I promise it to you, fully and completely. I, Rebecca Hope, take you, Messiah James, to be my lawful wedded husband, have and to hold from this day forward. The wedding bands are a perfect circle, with no beginning and no end. But we all know that these rings do not have, they do have a beginning. The rock is dug up from the earth, metal is liquefied in the furnace, then is molded and cooled, and painstakingly polished. Something beautiful is made from raw elements. Love is like that. It is hot and dirty work. 
It comes from a humble beginning made by imperfect beings. It is the process of making something beautiful where there was once nothing at all. This ring is a promise to accept the imperfections and recognize the beauty of each. Cyrus, will you take Rebecca as your wife to be the head of the home and to lead with integrity and sincerity? If so, say I do and place the ring on her left hand. I do. Rebecca, will you take Cyrus as your husband to be his helpmate in life, to work together to glorify Christ in all that you do? If so, <laughs> if so, say I do and place the ring on his left hand. Our Father, we have come to you once again and ask your blessing upon these two lives and a home that is being established. You have created within us a yearning to love someone and one's love that we can receive. We are thankful for the love we see between Cyrus and Rebecca, and we pray that you will be the foundation and the bond of their love for each other. Help them to grow in their love for one another and for you. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. 